Uh, next online, we have Antonio from Tachyon. Welcome, Antonio, who is going to talk about us. I think he's going to talk about numbers because they have numbers. A Web3 travel startup with actual numbers, which is rare, new, and, and you know, it's like a validation of all the things we've been talking about in the, in the last year. So Tachyon is a good, in my opinion, interpretation of the real the real world, uh, what can be done today without waiting for, you know, things to mature. And yeah, so it's going to be a very interesting story. Antonio, it's yours. Um, Thank you. You have these slides and I think you can use this, right? Yeah. Okay, so, easy. Yeah. And I have a timer. Right, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's kind of, you know, strange and also exciting because I did the first event uh, in Porto last year, it was mid-September, and we haven't launched yet the business. So it's something very new. We launched the business in the beginning of October. And this is kind of, you know, in the middle of an investor and general pitch. So I'm gonna be very, it's, it's a, a real use case business pitch. So we started from a question working on Tycan. So you know, right now, if you have to book a stay, you always have to decide between if you want to pay the lowest price or if you want to, you know, have the possibility to cancel your booking. So just making a quick survey: who is more from savings? So who is g who wants to pay the lowest price when booking a hotel? Raise your hands. Okay, I imagine the others are on the other side. I'm team savings, of course, because I'm the founder of a startup, so I'm kind of broke. And there are 500 people that every minute in Europe needs to take this choice. So it's a big dilemma. Who is affecting 77 billion euros of booking every year? This is happening because the current rate system is kind of win-lose. You know, you, you have these two options mainly. So the non-refundable one, you pay the lowest price in the market, but if you change your mind or if you have a problem, you just lose your money. On the other hand, you have the refundable booking, maximum flexibility because you can ask for the refund, but you know, you have to pay a premium price. So we started with Tachyon from here and we created we changed this paradigm, creating a new concept. We created a totally new rate. We call it the resellable rate. That is, you know, the, the match between savings and flexibility. Because this is a prepaid, non-refundable booking, but it's resellable. So, you know, it's it's the better of it's the best from non-refundable and refundable. And you book it on the hotel website. So, you know, the customer journey is very easy. You, you find this new rate on the hotel website that work with us. So you have the non-refundable, the refundable, and the resellable, or you just have the resellable and the refundable. You book it, you receive an email from Tachyon with your booking, with a link that, is, that redirects you to our marketplace, which is the, a secondary market for, for travel bookings. So, you know, right now you, you can resell more or less everything. You can resell a t-shirt, you can resell a TV, you can resell an iPhone, you can resell everything. Since uh, Web3 and the idea of digital good, you cannot, you, you could have the possibility to resell bookings. Why? Because bookings right now are nominal contracts for services. And that's why we are using NFT to, to change this paradigm. So, we are transforming bookings into this new idea of digital good. And we are doing this mainly for two reasons. The first one is for safety, and the second one is to create a new standard within the industry. So we, we want that bookings uh, will be NFT in the future. But this is peer-to-peer, -peer, so that's why we, we, we define ourselves uh, Web 2.5, uh, because blockchain-based secondary market, but you know, it's it's very easy to buy and sell uh, hotel bookings. It's it's Web2 experience. So it's open to everyone. Like a, a, a regular customer uh, doesn't even understand that is, you know, buying and selling NFTs. 
Of course, if you are a Web3 user, you can ask for your NFT. We send it to your wallet, and you can resell it on different marketplaces. If you are just Web2 user, you book on the hotel website. If you need, you just go on Tycoon, and you put your booking on sale. And it already worked. So as I said, we started in October last year, and now more than 800 customers uh, booked our resellable booking. And we made updating numbers, uh, 700 euros, uh, K euros of gross bookings, which is the value of resellable uh, bookings made on the hotel website. So it worked for customers, of course, because that's the best option for them matching flexibility and savings. And it also worked already for more than 40 hotels in Italy and Spain, which are the two markets that we are working, we're working in right now, mainly for three benefits. The first one is that the resellable rate is ex exclusive for the direct channel. So what's the situation? Like you have as a customer the same booking, the same price. On booking.com is just not refundable on the hotel website is resellable. And of course, you have a higher conversion uh, selling the resellable rate. This means, uh, I mean, <laughs> a lot of margin for, for hotels for each booking that is, uh, you know, converted from booking.com to the direct channel. The second one is that there is a cash flow improvement, of course, because this is a prepaid, no refundable booking. So when you, you sell, the room, you just receive your money, and that's guaranteed. And the last one is that we are creating a new market which has new opportunities. So we are sharing a fee, a 2.5% fee with hotels on each booking that is resold on Tycoon. Just to give you also numbers about you know, our monetization model to be transparent in order to next year <laughs> give you updating numbers, we are having these two revenue stream. So the first one is hotels pay, of course, on each booking that is made through the resellable rate. And cast the seller on the marketplace pays a 5% fee, which is shared uh, with, with the hotel. And we reach this little, but you know, uh, at least it's something number, which is a first MRR of 3.5K uh, monthly, of course, which is growing 20% month over month. So it's clear that we are not a booking platform. We don't want to do that. We don't want to be a new booking platform. We want to create a new market. And you see here there are some names like TravelX, which has already been named uh, before. We do believe that the biggest difference you know, between us and the other projects that are already building, um, exploiting this kind of opportunity to resell bookings and to tokenize bookings is that we are using a B2B2C approach to tackle the market, to enter the market. So we are not focusing, as I said, on the booking. We are just focusing on the resale. Indeed, we are using the current booking process. So you buy on the hotel website, you receive the email, you can enjoy the say, or you can resell, of course, the on, ta on the Tycoon Exchange. So now the question for sure is, what happens if a customer doesn't find another one to resell the booking? So we already took care of this uh, because we created these two layers uh, solution where you have on the first layer that you can resell to another traveler who is, of course, interested in the stay, or you can resell back to the hotel. Why? Because hotels can buy back the booking at a lower price. They can also make an offer, uh, and they can resell it on their direct channel at a higher price. So this is another opportunity. We call it revenue management 2.0. If this is not happening, we are taking care and we are guaranteeing the resale of the booking to everyone. So we are buying back the booking uh, in credits, so not in cash, uh, from 20 to 50% of the booking value. And customers, in, in this way, you know, this is more a marketing approach. So we are giving back credits to the customers so they are happy with all the experience, and they, became, they become new potential buyer of the marketplace because they have these credits. And if they use that, we are happy to pay, of course, to, to have the cash out. This is our targets. Um, 
it's kind of challenging, I have to say, uh, but we want to work with this uh, to make these numbers and make this business really big uh, because it can work only if it, it becomes, of course, a big and huge secondary market. We have already closed an important agreement uh, with a big international chain and we are launching it in Q3. And we are also working uh, with other two big international chains to, to close agreements, but I want to be scaramantic, <laughs> not say the name. Uh, and we are targeting 750 hotels for the end of the year, even if you know the market is quite bigger than this. So this is our target. These are numbers, number of hotels in Italy and Spain. These are the number of hotels in Europe. And of course, the world is much bigger. And for us, this is just the beginning. So in our vision of Tycoon, we want to create the secondary market for travel bookings. So not only, of course, accommodation, but think about, of course, uh, the possibility to resell a flight ticket, to resell a train ticket, to resell a booking from cruises, from tour operators. So this is much bigger. This is something that is not out there right now. There are a lot of secondary market, like eBay, for instance, the, maybe the most famous one. And I do believe that Web3 gives us the possibility and the opportunity to create, finally, uh, a secondary market for travel. And we want to exploit this opportunity. I was very quick. I still have nine minutes. <laughs> we, we can go with questions and comments. Um, any questions? I have a question. Uh, yeah. I have a question, not asking for the secret sauce as I'm possible competitor, co-competitor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was in, in my research. I was looking at these travel insurances as a mm -hmm. be safe rate as yeah. in Italy. I don't know if you know them. Yeah, they have an advantage over this and over us as well, mm -hmm. which is automation. So they, you don't need to do anything to recover some of of your booking costs. In their case. Why here you have to you ask the customer to make an action, which is mm -hmm. most of the time bothering them, bothering them more than the recovery, depending on the on the amount, of course. Uh, did you think about partnering with insurances to also offer because they also offer health health or other coverage, of course? Uh, how, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, like the be safe rate or the insured rates uh, have, to me, have a limit. Uh, because this is only uh, for objective cases. So if you just change your mind or if you have a, I don't know, an everyday problem and you cannot go, you just lose your money as you, because it's just not refundable. So um, I think that the the idea of resellability, you know, it's, it's, it's wider. And we can make it also insured <laughs> as, our, as our rate. We are thinking about that, but we also have um, you know, we, we want to grow very fast, so we want to be, we want to go to the hotels with a very competitive uh, proposal, which is, you know, 1.5% commission. Instead, like the insured rate is it's around 5 6%. So it's a lot for hotels. And that's why we haven't done that move, uh, that move yet. But yeah, we can do that. But I do believe that we have to give more, you know, uh, possibility to the customers. Um, here, one question. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Um, how do you tackle or mitigate the risk that a platform like Booking.com start offering a resellable yeah. uh, booking? Because, I mean, they could do it very easily if they want, and they can drive mm -hmm. the price or, like, non-refundable, refundable, or resellable, and that would be a problem for you. So how do you think you Yeah, I mean, th the point is that we are working um, with two different targets. So... We are working with the direct bookings, and of course, Booking.com is working on the, the, the intermediated bookings. So if they want to do that, they can do that, uh, but they are not going to take our part of the market because we are empowering direct bookings. So we are working there with that kind of bookings, you know, to, to increase that, uh, that size of the business. So they, they can do that, of course, but 
just for their uh, their bookings. Uh, I have an hotel in Rome, a couple of hotels in Rome, and I was reflecting about your products mm -hmm. and uh, just a, as a reflection, I would like to to think with you. I'm a little bit scared of your product, and no, no, it's a, it's just real. Because let's see, uh, as you know. Uh, the long, the longer the period, the lower the price. Mm -hmm. So essentially, if you book for one year, the rate is lower compared mm -hmm. if you book for tomorrow or three days. So I think that there could be the possibility of, uh, let's say, a big player that can book mm -hmm. like 30 rooms that I have, like a, let's say 100 mm -hmm. euro, can put all these rooms in your mm -hmm. exchange ways an exchange of room yeah. whatever uh, and I wait I don't have m more um, I don't have the power to manage my rates because of course uh, if I want to sell that rooms at 200 euros because the date is approaching I cannot do that because maybe the big player could have put this room on your exchange let's say 150 so in that case the, this player that book all my rooms before could get an advantage and as an hotel I can uh, waste my, let's say, my price power. Mm -hmm. if, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I, I understood. So I, I have different answers. No, no. <laughs> I start from. Of course, uh, yeah, I know, but I know this is something that, uh, of course, hotel managers are and owners are 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 telling us. So I, I'm quite prepared. Let's say. No, I know. <laughs> so the first one is that we are thinking and we are talking about two different bookings. So. The one that I can make on your hotel website, it's a new one. So I decide the dates, I decide the number of guests, I decide the room. And instead, the one that I find on Tachyon, it's of course something that is already booked. Second hand booking, let's say. So it's it's not to me it's not comparable because you always have to be, you know, within the dates that you find within that kind of room. Um so this is the first, you know, um, idea about that. Secondly, you have, you can have control over that. Why? Because you can like set just a specific amount of rooms that you can sell through the resellable rate. And I don't know, you start with five, then you can put the price higher and go on. Now you can exploit this kind of behavior, even if this is just a C2C platform. So there is no possibility for you know agency or something that is doing this professional to to do that. So it's still something that just customers can do. Oh, that's the point because I found your solution very fantastic, and very beautiful uh, for customers. Mm -hmm. So of course I book, I cannot go there and I resell the reservation. It's very fantastic. I will do from tomorrow. I will book only a resellable rate. Of course I'll do that. But the challenge for you is to prevent the misbehaving mm -hmm. of some operator. Because, of course, and you have to do very well that. Because otherwise, you can create problems to the hotels and whatever. And that could be the problem. Yeah, ju just like on a legal point of view, you can, you can do that if you are a business. So okay. you can take out your money just, you know, uh, putting uh, a private IBAN uh, and name. Uh, uh, so it's, it's, you know... Uh, it's just for for people, not mm -hmm. for businesses. And as I said, I think that there is a huge opportunity also for hotels because oh the no. same behavior, you can do that. You can do as an hotel manager. You can sell it in advance one year. You can sell it at 100 euros. Then one month before the check-in, someone put it on sale. You can buy back at 100 euros and, and resell it yeah, at course. 200 euros. So, of course, it's, a, it's an open market. So there are challenges. Uh, but yeah, I do believe that hotels need to, you know, um, try to to understand and define uh, also this kind of solution. Like considering that this is a new lever, you know, to to, to manage your business. So this is not a platform for business. Exactly. Let's say. Exactly. It's, pas it's a platform only exactly. for consumers. Yeah, we are thinking about a B two B model, but not now. We want to focus uh, strong on the B two C approach. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Do you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I I see the same uh, things like him, but uh, with opposite conclusions. 
I think you will succeed because you create a new player in the space that is the um, il, uh, il, uh, trader. Mm -hmm. Traders. Yeah. Speculators. Speculators, yes, normally traders. So uh, a big player that can uh, look the, 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 the spaces of cheap nights in advance and take them and then resell them and... and yeah, I mean, we, we are also still, you trade. know, so working... I, th I, I think it seems an advantage for clients that receive a better a better uh, service, and this is for sure uh, as a client uh, as a, a people uh, coming in your hotel. I I receive a better place a service because I have a night that, that I can resell if I have problems coming to you. But the real uh, mm, the real advantage is for this new game mm, new player in the space, I think, the big great. players. Yeah, I mean, we, we are also still, you know, working and defining the secondary market. So right now it's it's a very open secondary market, but who knows, maybe tomorrow can be uh, like defined as a close user group and, you know, to prevent something from hotels. Can be just not, you know, taken, but can uh, someone else can create new marketplaces based on our bookings. Because I do believe that you know we are doing mainly two things. The first one is the tokenization of the bookings, which is you know all the B two B work, and the second one is the exchange, so the commercial uh, part of the project. But this can be you know two pro two different projects. So and we are open to new solutions that can use our NFT to create new you know uh, maybe niche markets or Web three uh, marketplaces just to resell bookings. So this can happen, and it's new. So we have, yeah. No, no, no I mean just shorter <laughs> answers because we have many questions. So I say two more questions. Go, go, and go, go just go. keep the, the answer short. Sure. Yeah. So, oh, so there you go. Yeah. So uh, one of my biggest uh, uh, problem. I'm an Airbnb super host as well. Mm -hmm. One of my biggest problems in the past was when I rented out uh, my property, and without me knowing, the, the person that I rented it out to re-rented it out to mm -hmm. a group of people and they ended up trashing the place. So how would you prevent that from happening? And then just a couple more things. Um, what prevents someone to come and just completely take up all your bookings for the whole next summer or whatever, the whole lot, like, mm -hmm. and then resell that. And then, and then the other thing, the other question that's on my mind is if the value keeps on increasing for whatever reason, because of this resale market, then isn't there a risk that uh, the guest, the, the final guest that actually comes to your property is gonna mark you down for value when it comes to any kind of review system or rating system at the end of their stay? Or how, how, does, how, do you, how, how have you managed to figure that solution? I start from the last one. So we always syndicate, which is the, book, the original booking price of that booking. So you know that you are buying something that you know, the real value, the, the initial value, the booking value is 100 euros, and you're, you're buying it at 800 euros because, you know, maybe it's sold out, everything in that destination. So it's similar to every kind of marketplaces. So you're buying some shoes because they are sold out, and you buy for 1K euros, but the, the real value is not, you know, 1K euros. So someone bought it at 100 euros. But this is, Going to the second question, a very you know um, borderline case because you have to control all the market proposition to to do that. So to set the price. So if we think about you know uh, a stay in Rome, if you are able to control the price and you know put everyone on Tachyon to buy their stay, it means that you are you have booked all the rooms in Rome, which is you know. I think billion and billion euros of booking value. So it's very difficult. If you think about an event, it's easy. So you have, I don't know, like 50,000 uh, um, tickets. You can buy it all and you can resell it. If you think about a stay, it's much difficult because if you also, you know, if you bought everything in Rome, I can stay at two, kilo two, two kilometers to, from Rome. So, 
I mean, I, I understand that hypothetically it's it's a case, but you know, I, 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 I don't see it in the reality. And the last, the, the first question, the last answer, uh, you know the name who is the from of the people who is coming because you can resell it till the midnight before the check-in. So of course, you know, then the check-in is, is the same as a, a, regular, uh, a regular booking. So you know who is coming to your apartment and you have their uh, ID. So it's, it's, you know, the same. You can just book it till midnight. Okay, we have one last question. Yeah, just from a technical side, maybe what blockchain are you on? Polygon. And, okay, and do you cover the gas costs or does? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right now, yes, because they are quite like lower, a, a even if they are increasing. Yeah, one, so. one cent or one yeah. millicent. Not big yeah, no, I mean, a little bit higher also. It's got higher, yeah. 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 All right. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much.